Hey, it's Brad Blue Nile Farm. If you're into rotary mowers and you have a lot of uh, grass you want to keep mowed down on a regular basis, whether it's brush uh, and it's getting out of hand, you know, and you have yourself a five foot or seven foot uh, rotary mower, it takes a long time, it's really tedious. We get into a bat wing mower and you'll find out how quick and easy it is. It's actually very enjoyable to get on a bigger unit and actually see some real production. So with that said, uh, stay tuned, watch this video, hopefully you enjoy it. We're gonna go over a bat wing mowers and we're also gonna be, uh, it's gonna be pulled by my 1855 Oliver with a 5.9 Cummins conversion. And so you'll kind of get to see that in action too if that's uh, something you enjoy watching. So with that said, uh, stay tuned and enjoy the video. So why would you consider something this big versus just a seven foot or five foot mower? Well, first off, I have several tractors that are over 100 horsepower. So I have the, the means to go do it. Number two, um, time is money. And the more time I waste sitting on the tractor, cutting grass and so on and so forth, I don't always find that quite enjoyable, especially when we get into hours and hours and hours. I like to get in and get out as fast as possible. With the batwing mower, I can cover four to five acres an hour without a problem. So that I like because I know that I'm, I'm not wasting my time. Secondly, as far as price goes, if you buy a brand new one of these, they're going to be pretty pricey. They're going to probably cost you well over $20,000, and that's just a, a throwing out a number. But I know you can find used batwing mowers, 15 and 20 foot models, and even a little smaller for prices ranging from, say, $3,000 to maybe up to ten thousand dollars. This Land Pride that I bought, it's an RC fifty-five fifteen. It's a fifteen footer. I bought it for I want to say around forty-five hundred, five thousand dollars used from a dealer. And I'll tell you, it was well worth the money. It was in good shape. Um, there's no rust really on it, and it's it's just a heavy, heavy duty machine. You know, the steel on the decks is just phenomenal. Huge gearboxes that, that run the PTO. I mean, I wouldn't want to imagine how much it costs for a gearbox. But for the one money I put into this, which is really nothing, I never had a breakdown on it. It was money well spent. It has airplane tires, so it can easily travel across the road. I'm not going to worry about, you know, the tires, you know, falling apart. They're very, very solid. So um, those are things and conditions I want for, and that's why I bought one. So if you have the tractor and you want, you want to cover a lot of ground, Think about buying one of these. This is just something that you can't go wrong with. You know, throughout the machine, I mean, this is just such a heavy, heavy duty model. You have the stump jumper here. You got your blades. You actually have three sets. You have two on each side and one in the middle. Um, the unit itself is just, it relatively stays really clean. And uh, the steel on this, like I say, is so heavy. And then you got a heavy duty chain. You're really not having material blowing out the sides where it's gonna cause you a hazard. Um, like I say, I'm very happy with this. I know there's a school of thought on some people. They say, hey, I want to grind down my blades, make them sharper. I've also heard, you know, don't bother. You want them dull. These, just, they're designed to be dull and just to whack them down. I never touch up my blades. I just go out there and cut, and uh, they do pretty well. Now, the only thing I have to say, though, sometimes is because they are a batwing mower, that sometimes on the outside, it's not a clean, as clean of a cut. And I don't know if that's because it's a lack of power on the outside really uh, hitting the grass. But overall, though, it still does a pretty nice job considering I'm going into heavy fields. So I really do like this. So this mower takes two sets of remotes. And the way it works is that uh, it hydraulically lifts and basically it releases by gravity down. And same thing with the wings. It hydraulically folds them, but it gravity feeds them down. So the weight of the wings will actually set them down. And it's kind of a pain because sometimes you're not on the right level of ground or it's not leaning the right way. And you kind of have to get off and kind of hold the, the lever down and somehow try to push these wings so they get started. Because once they come down on gravity, that's how they work. So you really can't run the machine and lift and lower them like you have on some other machines. So that's something you might take in consideration. But ideally though, um, that's probably the safer way to run it. But again, this land probably takes two remotes. And be aware of that when you go looking for uh, some of these mowers, how they actually operate. They're very heavy on the tongue. Uh, this machine is really heavy on the tongue. And uh, because all your weights, see the tires are in the back and basically on the other end, it's basically the mower. So uh, there's really nothing in between you. So I think this mower itself weighs at least 4,000 pounds. So it's pretty heavy on the tongue of this tractor. Uh, but other than that, it's a very good unit and uh, it's well worth watching in the field. So we're gonna go out and I'm gonna show you how it runs. 
Now, one topic everybody just doesn't really discuss that much, but it's out there and you have to be concerned with is the different types of PTO shafts that are on these mowers. Some are 540, some are 1000. You know, for myself, I run everything at 540, so I just stuck with 540. Even though my uh, Ford 7710 and the Oliver uh, both have, uh, they could be both put on with a thousand our, um, PTO shaft. Um, I basically kept everything at 540 because it was easy. I don't want to keep messing around and changing things over. And I didn't really think there was that big of a need. So from what I read, there's a lot of personal preferences. Uh, the bigger the tractor, the more likely you're going to be at a thousand, but then you're going to have to make sure the shaft's the same. And it's all over an issue of torque. Um, I'm not really that knowledgeable about that issue, so I'm not going to really discuss it. But basically what I'm trying to say is if you have 540, you know what, just stick with 540. I don't think the 1,000 is going to make a whole bunch of difference, uh, but they say it does it when you're getting into bigger tractors. It's up to you, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that that's what exists out there. So when you do make a purchase, make sure you establish it to be a 540 or 1,000 because it's all on the shaft. And buying a new shaft is too expensive, so get the right one the first time and it will be a lot easier. So this is my 1855 Oliver, and it has a 5.9 Cummins put into it. Uh, so it's about 140 horsepower versus the old 98 horsepower that it was originally. Um, it's going to be pulling my uh, Batwing mower, and it's a good combination. And I also have duels for this tractor, which I think would be helpful down the road. But I haven't put them on yet, and they're a snap-on duel. So eventually I'll show you how that works down the road when I actually get that done. Uh, but with that said... Um, We'll see how this rolls. guys, I want to give you two quick tips about running these mowers. One is if you're in a field or you just get to a field or your tractor's just sitting there for a period of time before you even take off and say this tractor was sitting on my property over here in the field and I decided to jump on it, lift this thing up first and make sure no cats or anything else are crawling under here. For some reason, cats and other animals love the shade and they crawl under these things. And if you just get on and turn on and hit the brush hog PTO, it's all over. So to save your little critters, you know, that's one suggestion I have for you to do. Second little suggestion, carry these compact blowers. These are battery operated. This is my Milwaukee. It's a M18 style. I did a couple videos on this because I love this. And there's multiple tasks on the farm that you use these for. When it comes down to anything that cuts grass, well, I don't care if it's your lawnmower. I don't care if it's a uh, disc mower, flail mower, rotary mower, uh, baler. You know, you get all that chafe debris all over stuff of grass. And before you even put it away, do yourself a favor and start blowing everything off real good. So if it rains, then you don't have to worry about the grass, which will just eat at your metal. This is the quickest and easiest thing to do. Carry it on your tractor, jump off in the field before you put, take it home and zip this thing off and leave all the debris in the field where it should be instead of taking it home to the uh, property. Best thing I can tell you, I love this tool. I don't even use it enough myself. And uh, I'm telling you, 
it's so much faster just to use it and blow these things off and keep them clean, you won't regret it. So invest in one of these, uh, you carry it on your tractor if necessary, and these are really small. There's really not much to them, and I don't care what brand you get. I have a Milwaukee here, but you can go to Harbor Freight and get them. You can have DeWalt, you can have, a, uh, there's so many different brands anymore that make the same stuff. But this one works great. If you got a Milwaukee, I love it, and it works good for me. That said, um, you know, that's just a couple little pieces of advice that'll make your life a little bit easier. Hey guys, thanks for watching a video on Batwing mowers. I really enjoyed making it and I enjoyed running this machine when I have the opportunity because I do get to see uh, some quick results and it does a really a fine job. You know, what's nice about having that Batwing mower too, so if you're working the outsides of a uh, field, you can actually kind of get in four or five feet, you know, with that wing going inside. And as long as you don't hit any obstructions, is the way to go. Um, by far a very efficient unit and they are priced right, especially if you're one of those guys that go out to auctions or you're good in the used equipment. You can find a good used uh, unit and it'll save you a lot of money. So my suggestion is the only, the only drawback to a big Batwing mower is to get a 100 horse tractor. Now, I do know for a fact that even the Batwing I have here, it says it could be pulled by my 70 horse Kubota. But if it's anything like my disc mower, it's not going to be able to handle high brush. So if you got a little tiny grass and you're not really going to anything thick, I'd say a smaller tractor would work. But I personally believe 100 plus horsepower for a Batwing mower and it's going to make a world of difference for you because it'll get in there and get the job done and that's what you're on to. But even if you buy an older unit uh, tractor, you know, you can get one really affordable and if that's just a designated brush mower, that might be well worth the investment. So with that said, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit about it. Uh, I would definitely suggest if you have any type of property and you get tired of the tedious work, look into rotary mowers at the uh, Batwing style because they're definitely a more durable unit for the money and it will definitely save you a lot of time and time costs money so it's something you should consider see you guys later